Today I'm gonna teach you guys how you can create this logo pop out animation effect inside of After Effects. Let's go. My name is Evan Wynn, welcome to 11% Tutorials. As I mentioned, today I'm gonna to be teaching you guys how you can create this logo pop out animation effect all inside of After Effects. It's a really cool effect and we're gonna be using all entirely native After Effects plugins. So no, you don't have to get any extra outside plugins, no Sapphire, none of that, all built inside of After Effects. It's a really dope effect and it's also super easy to create. All you'll be needing today is After Effects and a high resolution video clip. Without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into the tutorial. All right guys, so now that we're inside of After Effects, you have your clip loaded up. I'm just gonna go ahead and first duplicate this layer so I'm gonna hit command D to duplicate our layer and then I'm gonna trim a section of this clip by hitting command shift D exactly where I want the logo effect to pop out so I'm just hitting command shift D to like I want it to start right here and then I want it to end like right around here so then I'm gonna hit command shift D and delete that so now we have our isolated clip layer it's time to start masking we're gonna grab our pen tool right here in the top left hand corner zoom in make sure you're selected on your clip layer and we're just gonna draw a very very simple rough mask around around our little logo. Once you've made your mask, hit the drop down on your top layer, hit the drop down on mask and hit the drop down on mask one and keyframe mask path. And we're just gonna animate this mask so that it follows this logo. So now that we have our masked out layer, you can see if we hit the visibility off on our bottom layer, we have just the mask masked out. It's time to actually animate this. We're gonna go ahead and turn this logo top layer into a 3D layer by clicking the cube icon. You can turn on the visibility back over here. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to hit the drop down on our transform and we're gonna go to the very, very beginning of our clip right here of this top logo layer. We're gonna create a keyframe at position, scale, orientation, X rotation, Y rotation, and Z rotation. And now it Make sure those are all keyframes at the very beginning. We're gonna hit Command C, copy those, and then we're gonna go to the very, very end of our clip right here, and we're gonna hit Command V to paste those. So the logo starts and ends on the exact same keyframes. And now once you've pasted those keyframes, we're gonna go to the very middle of our clip, and we're just gonna go ahead and animate it. I want it to like move a little bit more to the left when it pops out, and then I want it to obviously pop out, so I'm gonna increase that Z position right there, so it just pops out like that. And now you can see we have this very kind of static pop out effect. One other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust, I believe it's the Y rotation. Yes, the Y rotation, I'm just gonna spin that a bunch. I'm gonna make that spin a couple times. And then when we play that out, we have this crazy like spinning effect. And obviously the more you increase it, the more it's gonna spin. So I want it to spin like just enough. Right there, that should be pretty much good. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select all the keyframes in the middle. I'm going to right click them and I'm gonna hit keyframe assistant and select easy ease. And then all the keyframes on the left side, I'm gonna right click them once again, keyframe assistant, I'm gonna hit easy ease out. And then one last time on the right side, select all those keyframes, right click them, and I'm gonna change them to easy ease in. So that way we have a much smoother animation for the like pop in and pop out. So it's not like super static. Already it's looking pretty cool if you ask me. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create like a little cool warp effect on the bottom layer. Now this is a two part effect. We're gonna be creating some adjustment layers to create like a ripple warp effect. And then we're also gonna be creating this like little unique wave warp effect going on inside our bottom layer. So first go to your effects and presets and search for the warp effect. I'm gonna apply that to the bottom layer. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the warp style to fisheye. We're gonna set everything to zero. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the drop down, hit the drop down on effects, hit the drop down on warp. I'm gonna create a keyframe at bend at zero at the very beginning of the clip, go in towards the middle of the clip. And we're just going to decrease that to negative 100. So that creates this really weird warp effect and then copy command C that last and then go to the very end of the clip and set everything back to zero once again. So now once you play that out, we have this really trippy warp effect. I can just go ahead and right click this, change this to easy ease, right click this, change this to easy ease in and then right click this, change this to easy ease out. So that way we have like a smoother animation effect. Honestly, it looks pretty cool if you ask me. I'm just gonna go ahead and mess around with these keyframes. You can bring them closer together to make the effect 
effect faster. You can move them around on different parts of the timeline. And that way we have this effect. So it looks like my logo is being popped out when the car bounces back. It looks pretty cool and trippy. Now it's time to add this cool ripple effect. Now this is a little bit more of an intense effect. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to layer. We're gonna hit new and we're gonna create a new solid. Make sure that is a white color and you can just name this whatever. It doesn't matter. Then what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna turn down this opacity so I can see through it and see what I'm doing. I'm gonna grab my pen tool and I'm gonna create a very, very basic mask around my logo right here. It's just a very simple basic mask like one we created before. I'm gonna hit the drop down on mask. I'm gonna hit the drop down on mask one. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to increase that expansion a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit command D to duplicate that mask. So now we have two masks. And for the second mask, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it from add to intersect. I'm gonna invert that mask. And now you can see we have no mask at all, but don't worry. That's because all you have to do is just mess around with the expansion of the mask. So if I hit the drop down on mask two and I decrease that expansion, we have this nice like border stroke effect going on right here. So I'm just gonna set that to about like 40. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set a keyframe at mask expansion there right before the effect like pops out. And then while the effect is like mid air, I'm gonna have this border expand. So it goes all the way to the edges of the video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first increase the expansion of that first mask right there. So just increase that until it goes all the way over to the edges. And then I'm going to increase the expansion of that second mask so that it follows it and it goes all the way to the edges of the border. And the key thing is you wanna make sure that it just follows, like we have a nice stroke like that. So honestly, that looks pretty cool. So boom, there we go. That looks pretty cool if you ask me. This is basically gonna be our ripple effect. So however fast you want it, however like slow you want it, just go ahead and adjust those keyframe positions and it'll just change the speed of everything. I might just go ahead and right click those. And of course you guessed it, easy ease in. You have to mess around with keyframe beziers because they seriously just make your animation so much smoother. So that looks pretty cool. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and crank up that feather just a little bit so that it's not super harsh on the edges. So the feather there and then the feather there like that. So it looks like a little cool smoke misty ring. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and set a keyframe on the opacity actually right before it starts. And I'm gonna change the opacity to zero. So at the very beginning, so it like kind of like fades in and then it's like pops out. It's gonna look really cool when we apply our displacement map. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're just going to right click this whole thing. We're gonna pre-compose the entire thing. Make sure you select move all attributes into a new composition and you can call this like ripple. Now we have our nice ripple effect. We can go ahead and actually turn off the visibility. We no longer need it. Create a new adjustment layer by going to your layer. And now it's time to apply our displacement effect. We're gonna go to our effects. We're gonna search for displacement right here. And I'm gonna search for displacement map and apply that to my adjustment layer. And you can see everything's kind of looking trippy, but don't worry. We're gonna change the displacement map layer from adjustment layer one to ripple. And now you can see, boom, nothing happens, but don't worry. All you have to do is just go ahead and increase the max horizontal displacement and max vertical displacement to something like 300 to 500. And just like that, boom, we have this sick looking ripple effect. If you have any black edges, you can just go ahead and check wrap pixels around edges and boom, that looks pretty insane if you ask me. One other thing is just make sure that this adjustment layer ripple is below the mask layer so that the ripple is not in front of the mask like that. And if your ripple starts a little bit before your mask, you can just go ahead and adjust the opacity of that ripple so it can go back to my white solid composition and then hit the drop down on transform. And let's just go ahead and make sure that opacity is set to zero. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and readjust this ripple so that it actually like pops out when the, the logo is like flying in mid air and boom. That looks pretty insane if you ask me. We already have a pretty nice base effect going on. Let's go ahead and spice it up. So we're gonna add some glows and shines to make everything look pretty and fancy. So I'm gonna go to my effects. I'm gonna search for glow and I'm gonna apply this to our masked out logo layer right here. And now I'm gonna do increase that radius a bunch till it's like 90 to 100 range. And now we're just going to animate the keyframes on the intensity. So I want it to like start off as normal and then it's gonna glow up. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit a keyframe 
keyframe at the glow intensity at the very middle, go a couple keyframes before, set it to zero just like that, and then do the same thing on the other side when it like pops into place. So once it lands, we're gonna set that keyframe to zero as well. Boom, there you go. And now we have this nice like glow animation when it pops up, it looks really cool. One last thing to make this look absolutely insane when it lands is we're just gonna create one last final adjustment layer. We're gonna hit new, create a new adjustment layer, and we're gonna create like a cool shine effect. Now this is a really simple effect that you can apply to actually a lot of things. It doesn't even have to be just this effect. Go to your effects and search for Lumetri color, apply that to your adjustment layer, hit the drop down on basic correction and increase that exposure a bunch to like 4.5 ish. Yeah, that looks really bright and looks like everything is just baked right now. I'm gonna grab my pen tool and I'm gonna create a very, very simple diagonal rectangle, just like this, boom. Very simple, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Hit the drop down on mask, mask one, and just increase that feather a little bit. So it's like, I don't know, smooth. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a keyframe at mask path at the very beginning. And then once this thing lands, I'm gonna go to the very end of our clip right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and animate this mask over our logo. So you can see when you bring it over, it looks like it's like shiny. So that looks pretty cool. So now once we play it out, boom, we have this nice little like shine effect. And now one way to just make sure that it doesn't apply to anything else on the car is you just grab this track mat pick whip and just apply that to the mask layer like that. Extend the mask layer a little bit so that it fully covers the mask. And now you can see if we play it out, boom, we have this nice shine effect. It looks really cool. So the logo pops out. Of course, go ahead and adjust those keyframes if you want to speed up or slow down the effect. Lastly, to just blend everything all together is you can see right here, because of the glow, we have this weird like drop shadow effect that's just kind of messing up the masking and color and everything. One way to get rid of that is just extend your mask, your masked out logo a couple frames before. We're going to go to right when that glow starts to pop in. In, and we're just gonna go ahead, hit the drop down and go to our effects, transform, hit a keyframe at opacity at 100, and then go all the way a couple keyframes before and decrease that opacity to zero. So we're basically just having this logo like fade in and then it's gonna fade out at the end as well. So I'm gonna hit a keyframe right here, opacity, and then at the very end of it, I'm just gonna turn the opacity down back to zero. So that way the logo fades in and fades out so that everything in the effect is smooth and seamless. One last final tip to make this effect look absolutely insane. We're actually going to go ahead and hop into Premiere Pro. And the reason being so is we're going to add some camera shakes to this. I just want to show you guys our new Shake It Up V2 preset pack that we created for Premiere Pro. It comes with like 50 shake presets that are all just pre-made. All you literally have to do is drag and drop. It's super easy and watch this. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer, drag it to my clip, trim it down to about like, I don't know, eight frames-ish. And then I'm going to go to my effects. I'm going to search for Shake It Up v2 you can see right here in this folder we have a bunch of crazy shake presets we have heavies mediums hits transitions just a bunch of crazy other presets i'm gonna go ahead and apply a hit with a flash let's go ahead and apply this hit with the flash right here to our adjustment layer and now you can see we play that out boom we have this crazy shake and then the logo pops out and then just pops back in and the coolest thing about this is i can hit option or alt if you're on pc to duplicate that exact same adjustment layer and boom now we have the same shake applied at the end cool medium shake Shake, boom. So we have a hit and then another shake. That looks absolutely insane. And that was created all by just dragging and drop all inside of Premiere Pro. These camera shakes work great for any other project. If you're doing music videos, commercials, ads, vlogs, highlight reels, anything that needs some cool hype camera shake edits, you should definitely check out this preset pack at 11%.net. Saves me so much time. And with that, guys, here's the final result. If you guys made it to the end of the video, I just want to say thank you again so much for watching. If you managed to find any value or help from this video, please be sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe. It's free. All this content is free. So really, it means the world to me. And once again, if you're interested in spicing up your edits, saving time while editing, definitely make sure to check out 11percent.net. There we have a bunch of crazy presets and animations that you can use to just spice up your videos, take your edits to the next level. We have title card templates, camera shake presets, CRT overlays, paint overlays, and a bunch of other crazy preset effects. They're all custom made by me. I just wanted to make effects that would just not only make your effects look really good, but also save you time because I'm an editor. I know how tedious and hard it can be to come up with new effect ideas. So if you want to check out our preset packs, they're all available in the link in the description at 11percent.net. That's how you guys support me and keep me going so I can keep making free tutorials like this for you guys. Definitely make sure to leave a comment down below of what tutorial you'd like to see from us next. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.